everyone, welcome to Connected. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I am ready to converse with Carla Ollé. She created a study agency that provides its students not only the chance to learn English, but also learning about the culture and experiencing life in Vancouver, Canada. If you always wonder or were curious about how do the student exchanges and camps work, the information that is about to be disclosed is for you. Do not go anywhere. Connected starts right now. Bolivian Carla Ollé, business administrator, studied at the Bolivian Catholic University and obtained a master's in financial markets at the Autonomous University of Madrid. She worked for almost 10 years in the Bolivian stock market, going through a brokerage and ending up in the Bolivian Stock Exchange. In 2004, together with her husband and her young son, she emigrated to Canada and reinvented her life in Vancouver, where she has lived for 15 years. Five years ago, her student project was born. This project has become much bigger. At first, it only focused on bringing kids to Canada, to what in Bolivia is called exchange students, young people from school between 14 and 17 years old. Today, she represents not only the school district, but also many universities. Her programs no longer focus only on classes for school students, but also on courses for adults who want to have a life experience studying and working in Canada. She loves what she does and she turned into an aunt, a friend and a godmother for many of her students. Living in Canada allows her to offer real help, good study programs in reliable institutions. It is my pleasure today to introduce Carla Ollier. She is talking to us all the way from Vancouver in Canada and she brings us a lot of information about English programs and also English camps. Welcome to Connected, Carla. Please tell us, how did your life lead you towards the path of education and languages? Thank you very much for having me today, Fabiana, in Connected. It's a pleasure for me to talk with you guys and to be in your program so everybody can hear me and can understand what I'm doing here. My pleasure. What I can tell you about education and language here in Canada, it's a huge, huge market. Uh, more to be more specific in Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, because those are the main cities and everybody wants now to send their kids to Canada, to move to Canada or somehow be able to come to Canada. Don't forget that Canada still uh, between the three to five um, most important countries in the world where the quality of life is the best. And I can tell you that it's a really good life that we have here. So I started thinking about that. I, I had the opportunity to move to Canada almost 15 years ago. I started again here and I want to offer something to my people, to my country, the opportunity to be here as well. So this industry, as I said, it's big, it's huge. Why not through studies, through languages? So that's how I started the, my, my company five years ago. That is great to hear and also it is very important information because yes, Canada is one of the uh, top countries where people are more searching always to go study or actually move there. Tell us Carla, how and when did English in Canada come to life? What is its mission? How, what, did, what were your plans when you decided to put the company together? Okay. 
when when you ask when i would say this started five years ago and how it was very interesting because i we as a family we started as a host family okay i was always checking kids looking listening different accents i i remember i used to hear oh this is a mexican kid oh this is an argentinian kid you see and i never and I never saw Bolivian kids because it's very easy to recognize our own people. And um, I said, okay, I want to be part of this type of programs. So I enroll my family as a host family. And we started receiving students from Asia. Right now I have, I host a kid that is 12 years old and he's from Korea and he lives with us. So we had many, many students, and I've been just asking how about uh, different markets, where are the Bolivian kids, and the school district talked with me, and they said, you know what, we don't have Bolivian students, we never receive any applications from Bolivia. Okay, so that was nice to hear that, right, because I said, okay, people from Bolivia send their kids to US, to UK, to different countries, why not to Canada? I know one of the main reasons it's because they think it's very cold. Canada is very cold, but that's not true. And uh, okay, so I started with just exchange students. And I said exchange students because it's a terminology that we use in Bolivia when kids are in school, right? I'm going uh, for an exchange program. It's not really true because Canada, uh, we don't, we don't send people, we don't send students in school age, like teenagers, to study over there. So we just receive students, okay? So I started to promote this in different schools in Bolivia, and I received many, many kids, many applications, and everything went really good. People were very happy because the main the main thing, the, ma the, the mission, I would say, of my programs is to give the peace of mind to the parents, okay? I am here, so that's the main thing. I am here and I'm gonna be checking on their kids. They don't live with me, of course, but I can assure that the program is real. They are going to a family. It's not that they enroll and over there in Bolivia and nobody knows where are the kids going right. right so the company starts to grow in little by little first with students from school now I am agent for different colleges universities I also have different type of programs if people want to come study and work here that is a really nice program it's not expensive at all I have to say because they have a, a diploma and they have the experience here. That's another program, and I also have the master degrees, the MBAs here. So as you can see, I have programs for kids starting 14 years old to adults. Short-term programs and long-term pro programs. The, the, the other thing is, I, I still receive, I'm a host family, and I can't receive um, students that speak Spanish because it's not good for them. They are here to learn, right? And if I receive a, a Mexican, Bolivian, or Peruvian student, it's, it's not good. They are not going to, uh, to have the best of the program. They have to come here and live with a, a family that speaks a different language, in this case, English. Right. So the, the focus, the main uh, teaching, it's the language. Like they go there to study English, and then let's say if they are pursuing um, all like a bigger um, certificate or masters, they already speak English or how does that work? Yes, yes, they are two different uh, type of programs. The ones that are here just to learn English they can come with a, uh, level zero or one or with a higher level and they want just to practice, right. right? That's the English program, that is one thing. And the other programs are study and work. It's to study to pursue a certificate, but they need to have a certain level of English. Uh, it's an intermediate advanced. I see. 
So I saw on your website that you um, you, you promote uh, not only the programs but also the camps, summer camp, winter camp. Tell us about those. Yes. What are the difference between a program and a camp? Those are really fun, and the camps are very short-term programs. Okay. They are only for four weeks. Okay. Right now we have. Uh, eight kids in two camps that I have. They are different camps according to the age, according to uh, what they are looking for. Okay, They are for four weeks and they have English um, lessons in the morning and then in the afternoon they have activities. The camps are for kids between 12 years old to 18. So in winter of course they have a lot of activities for winter, they go to snowboard, to ski, up to the mountain, uh, ice skating, all that type of activities that you can do during winter. And now uh, we have the summer camp in July, that it's the same idea, they go to lakes, they go to picnics, a lot of activities that every day something different for them. So they, it's, I would say it's a, a very, um, good vacation for them because they are learning, they are practicing their their language, the new language, and they are having fun as well. Right, because what I'm what I think it's beautiful about the um, your your way to uh, teach, even though you are not the teacher, but I'm saying the beautiful vision is that they don't only uh, spend time in the class, right? Doing grammar and doing all of the lessons, but also then later you have the chance to be surrounded with people that speaks the language and you pick up slang and you pick up all the cool things and all the other, uh, the other uh, elements that the other kids can bring. Yep, you are absolutely right. When they are here, they have to learn not only uh, the English, as you said, they have to learn some social skills, right? Okay, my garbage, I have recycled because in Canada we recycle everything. Okay, I have to do my own laundry. I have to, if we're going out in the whole group, we have to cross the street in, in the corners. We cannot cross wherever we want, right? So those little, little things that make Canada a great country. So at least for a month, my kids learn all that and they really like it and they really love it and I would say 90% um, of the kids that come uh, to school as exchange students or to camp, they want to come back. And also when we find ourselves uh, taken away from our environment, it's always challenging and it's always exciting and it's beautiful to actually have that opportunity and also on top of that, learn a new language. I think your brain, it's in a different state. So you understand and you learn things more probably quickly or easier. Carla, tell us about the process to get onto the programs. How do they work? Okay, you, you were right. It's not only for Bolivian. Actually, I brought kids from Colombia and Mexico already, and I'm trying to grow this to Peru. Argentina, Chile, all all the Spanish uh, Spanish market. So if well, they have to at least know what they want, right? If they want to come for a short term period or long term, if um, if they want uh, to study it, uh, just in ho on holidays or so on. Okay, they decided. I give all the information to the parents or to the kid. I 24-7 connected through WhatsApp, Skype, Facebook. I pass them all the information, they decide, then I send them all the forms that they need to fill. And the, what they need to provide, it's not too much. In most of the cases, it's just fill the forms, fill up the forms. In some cases, they need to send the last, um, their, their, their passport, copy of the passport, one, one picture. And um, I sent to the school, it depends on the school of the, or the college, those forms, they accept my, my students and they need to send the payment. The payment has to go before they come here and before they apply for the visa. 
the visa and the flying tickets they have to do on their own because everything is different, right? And the same for the to, to, to obtain the visa. They have to do that on their own with all my guidance. I'm here to guide the family. They do that and um, they are ready to come after that. In most of the cases, uh, the visa is not a problem because they have the LOA, which is the letter of acceptance. So with that, they are proving that they are coming to Canada to study and they have everything arranged in terms of uh, uh, house, food and so on. Right, so basically you are the connector, right? You are the person in between the student and the school of the college, right? Yes. That is a great mission, I think, the one that you have. Receiving kids is very, to, to have kids from different nationalities, it's very, very nice because you learn a bit from their country, right? What, what they're supposed to do is to bring their culture, especially in the long-term programs and when they are kids, because we can provide the same uh, uh, home space for adults or for people that are uh, teenagers, like 18, 19 years old, that we provide houses, but the experience is different because they they use these houses more to live, yeah, right? Uh, as a hotel, they live there, they have food, they have food and um, and a bed. But for kids, for young kids, they they have families here, and the families expect them to to, uh, to the family. We expect as a family to learn from them, to learn about their country. Uh, every now and then, if we can find a restaurant, uh, in this case, from Korea, we like to go with my student and to try their food, and he helped us choosing the food, right? I have, uh, there's one very, very nice experience from one of my Bolivian students. She was uh, 15 years old, I think, and every week, every Friday, at their homestay family, they used to cook Bolivian food. And the mom was connected on Skype, I think, <laughs> teaching her daughter how to cook something Bolivian. And they listened to Bolivian food, they were watching uh, nice videos from Bolivia, and they enjoy a Bolivian meal. Isn't that neat? It is. <laughs> it's very, very nice. And they, I, I, I Every like when I see this family, they they always ask about the student because they still in communication. Right. And they said, "Oh, we miss the Bolivian food. It was really really good." It's a very uh, awesome way to build relationships because these are kids today, but then in the future they're going to be professionals, and who knows what they're going to be doing and where in the world they would be. So the fact that they are actually. Uh, becoming friends at a very young age, knowing other cultures, other languages, other uh, lifestyles, it's priceless. It is. So that's the idea of this program as well, to build relations. And relations not only here, relations all over the world. Because as I said at the very beginning, education, the industry is huge. And we receive people from all over the world. I see, that is awesome. So let's go back a little bit to the other questions I was telling you about the other side. You as a family, or you and your family that receive a student, how did you got into that? Okay, all the families here, they, they have to be registered with different companies or with the school district. I am a host family for the school district. So I, I receive only kids from 12 years old to 17 years old because I have my own kids and they go to school, right? So I'm registered with the school district. The school district here, it's like the, the principal, it's like an umbrella. Here's the school district and all the schools are below the school district. Uh -huh. Yes, all the public schools, right? So the families have to be registered with the school district and of course we present a lot of forms, criminal check records, they, they have, we receive some inspections like every year they come and visit the house to make sure that I 
have a proper bedroom to my students. If there's any change in my house, they put that on my form. Right. So when the student is coming, uh, they send my profile to their family to see if it's, it's a match. Right. Right. Of course, sometimes there could be some aspects that the student uh, doesn't like, but and we there's our job there to try to change the student to move if they are not happy with this family we can find another family right, right? the main thing is that the students are safe exactly. the only thing that we really care is that they are safe right so um there was one student that they said the kids are annoying here okay we're gonna find another family for you but is there something else no nothing else Okay, it's just the kids annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a process, right? We, we, we try, the school is to try to find, to find another family. Sometimes it can take uh, three days, five days, or a week, but it's not an emergency. Right. You know? But it's important that you try to solve their needs, right? And that's like, because it's not only, it's not a difficult situation, but it is, um, how do you say, it can get deep. Since you Absolutely. guys are like having the day by day living and you know routines and stuff like that, so definitely it's important to to the, for the students to find themselves uh, comfortable. So Carla, tell me on the let, we talk about the camps, which are more directly for like the youngers, right? The youngest people. How about the oldest? What if, uh, let's say, a case we have a guy that you know like a young professional that would like to go for a master's degree pursuing master's degree and he's also married so how would you help this type of situation okay it's really great and it's a very very good opportunity that people can have here or if they want to not only the master's degree also if they want to study a career here what happened is that these programs, certain programs, not all, offer to people who study the, the career university here, offer the postgraduate work permit. Okay? So they can they can apply to that program and once they finish they can work in Canada. And after certain years of working they can apply for the permanent residence, which is great. Right. right? That's in the case that they come to study. Now, if they are a family, a family of two, a family of four, and the parent or the, 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 the dad or the mom wants to study something, or somehow they want to, uh, to move their family, okay? Right. This is one excellent tool. Because yeah, it could be mom or dad that is going to study. They have been approved by the university here. So the family applies for the visa. Okay, one person is a study and they can work part time, of course, but the, the partner can work full time. Oh, they I have see. the work permit. And the kids, they have the right to go to school here. And most of the schools are public, so they pay zero. Right. And after they finish the studies, they can apply to a different permit to stay longer, to work. And as you've been adding years to your to your case, you're building a new case of immigration. So you can become a permanent resident. Right. And you can, one year, you see and you look, look you, oh my God, we are here like five years studying and working, right? So you're here and very perfectly legal to work and to join everything in the country. Right, and also having a career, which is like a huge plus. Absolutely. Of course, these type of programs, they are some requirements because we're talking about uh, degrees, right? Not diplomas or not English programs. We're talking about degrees. Right. So the minimum that they need is a good English, an intermediate advanced level of English. Right. This is valuable information. I'm so happy that you took the time to share it with us because really it is planting a seed for those that, you know, have that need that or would like to try something different. Carla, please Absolutely. share your social media information so people can follow you and learn more about your programs. 
Go ahead, please. Absolutely. I have the Facebook page, which is Inglés in Canada. I'm going to send you the name. I have an Instagram account or I have the WhatsApp. You can contact me if you have any questions. Please feel free to contact. I don't charge and I can help you uh, building or building your case to see, okay, I'm this person, I'm this age. What do I have? I want to to immigrate to Canada. Okay, we can start planning something. All right. Since the beginning, if you don't talk, if you don't speak English, since learning English, then study something better and then move in here. Or if you you are a teenager or you have a young kid as a parent, text me, send in, send me an email. My email is Carla at intercambiuscanada.com and I will be happy to reply. Love your work and I really, really applaud. I think that is like the fact that you left but you remained a connector, you know, helping others. It's a great, it's a yeah. great lifestyle. I want to send a big kiss all the way to Canada to you and your family, Carla Ole. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Fabiana. I really enjoy your program and all your videos. Thank you for this interview. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Not because living somewhere else is better than where we currently live, but because having the experience of knowing other people's culture, lifestyles, and practices help us be more compassionate, more understanding. It guides us to develop a collective state of mind. One where we accept our differences, embracing our equalities. To connect with me, send me an email or a private message on my Facebook page. Stay connected and until next time with me, bye-bye.